I'm going to be diving today in about 12 to 15 feet of water using the D2. This is the second time I'm going in with the D2. The first time I had issues because I didn't have the dive shaft and the upper part of the setup is metal. So I couldn't get it to balance right. I get false signals. Now I have the dive shaft, so we're going to give it another shot. Um, I'm keeping my settings. Uh, I'm using dive mode, but I've tweaked it a little. I'm keeping uh, sensitivity at 90. I'm going to keep my salt sensitivity at 9. And most importantly, that audio response, I'm going to put up to 7 because I want the deep targets to sound loud and clear. Uh, when you're underwater, you don't want any faint signals. Uh, you want it to bang as loud as you can because you're dealing with your breathing plus the wetsuit hood. So you really want to hear those loud hits. Getting started with a quick ground balance. And then I'm going to work my way out to the area where I'd like to try. A uh, pretty popular swim area years ago. Uh, first thing I'm noticing is even with the salt sensitivity at 9, it's very quiet. I just hear sometimes a little bit of chatter in the background, but that's fine. Using my compass to make sure I'm going in the right direction. This signal is a perfect example of why I like the audio response at 7 because I'm hearing a nice solid hit and when I go to all metal pinpoint I can barely hear it. But I know it's something good and it's down deep so my first signal here, um, it's going to take a little while to dig out. Uh, I set up my tones where anything between 40 and 80 which is where most of your gold is going to be uh, has a very high tone so I could hear that well. Stuff in the 80s like brass or lead, I have at a uh, lower tone, but I can still hear it okay. So this one had, uh, in the 80s, the number was 82 on this one. old brass tag. You can tell this one has some depth and it leads up to 90. Nice solid repeatable. Crusted up silver ring. Dug out a deep penny and right next to it, on the edge of the hole, I get a solid 95. And it's very deep. Loud and clear.
1966 crusted up clag quarter. This one is a solid 75, that's why you're hearing the high tone. Three sections of a four leaf clover brass bracelet. This one is reading 84, and when I go to all metal pinpoint, it's barely audible. It's just extremely deep, but it's coming back very clear and discriminate. Silver dimes usually read in the low 90s, but this one was only 84 because the salt water rots these away to where they get very thin. You can tell there's another deep target here, and this one reads 83. I have to say I've been going to this place for many years with my Excalibur and I'm impressed at the amount of deep targets I'm hearing with the D2. Another crusted, rotted, thin silver dime. A very solid, repeatable 78. When I checked it out in all metal, you could hear how deep it is. This is the kind of signal we go all day for.
A Victorian era gold ring. I had no idea what kind of design it was until I got out of the water. Another high tone, and this one was so deep, I could barely hear any kind of response in pinpoint, but I got a nice solid hit in discriminate, and it was reading 75. Uh, one thing I noticed is what it reads at depth, it also reads out of the hole, which is kind of neat. The ID is very accurate on this thing. Vintage brass clip from a bathing cap. This one was a solid eighty seven, eighty eight signal. And you could tell with the all metal pinpoint, it had some depth and it was a pretty strong signal, but it was down there. Brass swim buckle. This is another 8788 and you can hear it's got depth and it's a nice repeatable signal. Uh, sounds very much like the last one, but always have to dig them out because you never know what you're going to get. Uh, the compass is coming in real handy. It's getting murky and it's so easy to get turned around and head out the wrong direction. But you'll notice I'm constantly looking at it just to make sure I'm staying in the right area. You'll notice on these deep targets, uh, actually trench and dig deep sideways going down to, to the walls. And the key is trying to move the target. You want to get it out of the hole, uh, much easier to find when you pull it out and then you go over it in the pile next to the hole. Uh, trying to locate something in the hole is really hard. So I've learned over the years just to move the target. That's your best way to find it.
another swim buckle. Good to find these because you know you're in the right area. This nice solid signal reads 79 and the all metal pinpoint's a little stronger and a little larger than a coin sized target. This nice high tone reads 75 and has decent depth. Brass lipstick case. Nearing the end of my dive, this is one of my last signals. It reads 61 with a nice high tone and I could tell it's very deep. This one actually takes a while for me to locate, um, but it kept on coming back. Every time I went over it, there was no doubt about it that it was down there. I just had to, it took a while to get it out of the hole. Uh, well worth the wait.
Was not expecting to see that glimmer again. After a little more than three hours of hunting, these are the worthwhile targets I kept. Um, it was it was impressive. I've been over this place with the Excalibur many times, and a lot of good stuff over the years. I wasn't expecting this much. I was expecting to get some targets, but uh, this D2 was punching down very deep. Um, I'm really looking forward to going back there, but just to go through some of the stuff, you can see there were two gold rings, one silver ring, and uh, the first ring was really interesting. Ends up that it's a snake or a serpent of some kind, which is a popular design back around the turn of the century, and uh, you can see this one's pretty crusted with some solder marks, so I decided to use a little electrolysis to, uh, to get off some of the black stuff and uh, did that for a couple minutes and it ended up uh, cleaned up nicely. It's got one little stone in it and uh, it's got a maker's mark I have to research as well. Also those uh, little clovers that were part of a bracelet, there's three of them, they were brass, not plated or anything. And then uh, the three silver dimes were all heavily crusted and once I cleaned them up it ended up that two of them were mercury dimes, one is some kind of foreign coin I started to clean that a little stronger, not quite sure what it is. Um, this ring here, I wasn't sure what it was. When I cleaned it up, it's a 1962 class ring of some sort. I can't read where it's from. Uh, first signal of the day was this brass tag, number 27 on it. Uh, got a couple regular nickels, and this one was a 1910 V nickel. And the last signal, before I came in, was this ring uh, ends up having a garnet in it and uh, cleaned it up to get rid of that solder point blackness just polish it up a little bit so this was uh, a lot of fun today and I'll be going back there very soon again using the D2 and see how it does thanks for watching